What up, Red? What up, Bloody Crows? Hope you have a good day, too, my guy. Let, let us, get it, let us, ha, 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 get started. Uh, yeah, let's get started here. Let me just do this. This is a plant-based joke. I'm just fixing everything up. And it looks like we're looking good. How's the volume on everything, guys? Is the music okay? Is my audibles? Do I need to be turned up? Do you want to get turned up? I'll do it. We can get all the way turned up. We can get turned up Tony up in this bitch. Not really, but that guy's that guy's an everyday Florida man, and I love watching that guy do stuff. Um, boom. Looks like we were hearing ourselves there for a second. <clears throat> All right, mute that, mute that. Everything else looks good? Question mark? Yeah, looking good. Looking good. All right, so let's do this baby account stuff. Do we want to make a video? Because I know a lot of people were asking me, like, what do I do for Warren Crusoe early game? And essentially, I do something like this. Like, I put, like, my second best... Team on defense. Everything else stays on offense. Because in Crucible, you need to get one win. In War, I just completely keep everything for offense. And I'll do that up until such a time as I have 11 teams. And the 11th team will go on defense. Any sounds good? All right, dope. I'll just turn it down on my headphones in. And if it gets pumped, I'll turn it up. All right, so, uh, yeah, let's do some cause and crucible. Let me just make a video off of this. In three, two, one. All right, guys, so here we are in the gameplay on the baby account. A lot of people ask me, hey, what do you do in the early game? How are you setting up your offense, your defense, so you're competitive and uh, just you're progressing, right? And I think that's a very valid question. And the answer is learn the game better than other people and perform better than other people. Hold everything for offense so you can do that. Because if you put everything on defense, you are putting everything in your opponent's hands to either screw up or win. And you are taking a lot of your own power away. So when I look at my own Crucible, I have just one team on defense. I have only my extreme X-Men on defense. I will only have my extreme team on defense until such a time as I have six other amazing offensive teams. And then the seventh team that I build will go on the defense. Now, luckily, in a mode like War, kind of your best offense teams are also the best defense teams. Like, think about New Avengers. Think about um, the out-of-time team, oddly enough. And, and you go from there, right? So, when you're building your, your best offensive team... In six months, when you put on defense, it's going to be a very, very strong defense. So it works really well. That's not exactly true in Crucible. Masters of Evil doesn't translate as well to defense. New Warriors doesn't translate as well to defense. Um, they've they've coded in a counter to Tangled Web in every single kit. But it doesn't matter. The, the theory would still be the same. So you still just build your best offensive options first. They flex the defense when you have an excess of six. Maybe seven if you want to play it safe. But that's what I have here. I have one team on uh, defense. My opponent actually has nothing, so they have everything on offense. And this is going to hurt them on the efficiency. I doubt they've done their attacks yet. But I'll do mine anyway, just to get this out of the way. So I'll start just by putting the Eternals up. And I'll put literally uh, nothing with them. Just make sure my characters are slower than uh, 126 and 125. So Icarus will go first. I assume everything will be dead after that. Uh, oh, I brought Photon. Oh, no. I done goof because I wasn't paying attention. So that's going to be one efficiency point wasted. But my opponent still has to clear a full extreme team. And since our rosters are pretty comparable, actually, this one doesn't seem like a boosted account nor a uh, time heisted account. I think it's actually going to be pretty even. So I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and we'll get stage four out of the way. I'm going to hit it with um, bu -bu 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 Hive Mind. Hive Mind is very fast, very efficient, and they function in stage four. 
In fact, they function so well, we may be able to do this in two moves. I think we got this in two moves. We sure do. Perfect. So far, so good. Two moves, two moves. Show me your moves. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, This one, let's grab Vulture and someone who's also fast. Let's go Spider or Lizard. I want Shocker for the offense up. And then again, I want some slow people. So let's go ahead and grab, I don't know, let's grab Emma and US or Agent Venom. And this is the part of knowing the game, where knowing the game comes into account, right? Because my opponent probably doesn't know the speeds of these characters, and that's vitally important. Lizard didn't seem to do enough work there. Let's see if we can... Uh... There we go. Uh, so three turns on that one. So knowing the speeds of the characters and knowing which characters can destroy people on their first turns or AoE, or just characters that combo really well. Like you saw I throw Shocker in there because he gives offense up to Lizard, and to Vulture, which made that a lot faster. Knowing those sorts of things is what's going to uh, really dictate how well you're going to do, how quickly you're going to do it. Um, okay, we got Kestrel in at 125. I want to bring people in that are slower than her, but still AoE, uh, which is probably just the full Pegasus team that I have, right? Uh, obviously, minus Vulture, we can throw in... Ba -ba 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 Captain America! So this again, this will probably take three turns actually because I can't uh, I can't hit all five at once with this current comp. So this is two, and then this will be three. Oh, the dodge! Oh no, we got trolled by the dodge. That was four hits. Alrighty, next up, number five. Want to make sure I don't waste anything trying to, to be too fancy here. So next we'll use our new warriors. And you might be screaming, use your Masters of Evil, what are you doing? Kang is going to one-shot everything. Well, this account doesn't have Kang unlocked. Because obviously if it did, I'd be using him. Uh, let's just throw Mockingbird in there. Alright, damage comes in. Let's get rid of these, and then Deathpool will pop off. Oh no, he lived! Again, that's going to cost us efficiency. Ah, not, not enough, though. Perfect. Alrighty. One more team. This will be our uh, Sinister Six team. The reboot, if you will. Let's grab Craven. Um, <laughs> I'd rather people who are a little bit slower, because Spider Slayer is going to kill everybody. So let's just do like this. This should be fine. If Craven doesn't kill everybody, Spider Slayer will. Doop. Perfect. Set him right up for Spider Slayer to finish it off. So as you can see, this was very efficient. Our opponent threw nothing up on defense. And just the one team, just throwing up one team on defense, is going to drastically change um, how well he can do. So we, we scored an amazing score. 50,233 is going to be an amazing score. He's not going to be able to top that. Um, not with not with this big extreme team here at 344. So that's how I would handle Crucible. Now, War is a different story, and we don't, we're not going to play all these fights because early game War is dictated on what alliance you joined. If you joined a uh, setup alliance, then you might be facing real teams. If you joined a brand new alliance, you just unlocked War, then you might um, be facing all shield minions. It looks like we got an actual War this time, which is one of few times we've had it. Let me see how many enemies we have. Hey, our, our opponents have 24 people, so this will be a real war. And what I'd say is, uh, and I'll show the defense here. We we basically throw nothing up on defense. I don't even know what room I'm in, but we, we have so many shield security. We are not prioritizing war defense at all. Um, there's no point in putting up a defense um, that is weak because they're just going to walk through it. Like, as you can see... If these are reasonable opponents, I'll be able to beat all their teams. And then it doesn't come down to who had a better defense. It comes down to who has more participation, at least in this early game. So you want to make sure your alliance is as active as possible. Because even if we're losing two, three, or four fights here, 
if all of our members are doing 10 attacks and they have members that are only doing like seven or eight and some are just skipping the war, we're probably just going to win. Um, so yeah, we're, that's how we handle it for now at least. And I would do the same thing in war that I talked about in Crucible. I will make 10 banger war offensive teams and the 11th, the 11th will go on defense. Maybe I'll make baby, baby defense teams after I have about seven banger war offensive teams. But in no world does it make sense to focus that because you're pretty much always going to be put into either an alliance that does have defenses, in which case you're going to be like the the offensive skilled person. That's what you're going to have to be. Uh, or you're wasting resources and you're going to stretch your roster too thin and you're not going to be focused on things you need to focus on. Like Crucible, which is actually a 1v1 mode. Or Raids, which is you and your alliance getting the best rewards. Arena, Legendary Unlocks, that sort of thing. So anytime you focus on word defense as a new player, not a veteran player, completely different from veteran players, you're kind of wasting your time. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this little TED talk of mine. I hope it found you well. Um, stay tuned for more stuff coming down the pike. I have no idea if this match is going to work. I've never used Hive Mind here. I just thought it'd kind of be fun. Um, I guess we're, well, you know what? This was a horrible idea because Kestrel and Captain Marvel are going to pop off here, huh? Uh, well, let's try and get an ability block Captain Marvel, I guess. All right, that's good. We got a bunch of deflex too. Let's see who Kestrel kills, if anybody. <gasps> oh, we might get to push somebody. Oh, we did get to push him. Get wrecked, nerd. All right, cool. This will probably be a win. All right, guys, so you take care. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day. Stay tuned for more great Marvel Strike Force beginner content. But until then, stay happy, healthy, have fun, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now. There you go. We're in gold, actually. Oddly enough. None of the Twitch streams are becoming VODs, which makes them very hard to watch. Uh, I will fix that. So Kingdom Hearts really fucked with our our stream. So all my VODs are automatically becoming unpublished. Because Kingdom Hearts did a, uh, a copyright strike. Because they suck. Uh, but I'll get that handled. I shall get that handled. Alright, let's use New Warriors here, I guess. This should be good just like this. What up, Mega Bros? Hope you're having a good one, too. Uh, I didn't realize how big a punch-up this was. This is actually quite a big punch-up. And now we have offense down on the character. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hold on. If Firestar dies, we lose. Unless this blind lands. Did not land on Iron Man. We're in trouble. Oh, no. I needed her so bad. Okay, hold on. I didn't realize how uh, impactful Miss Marvel was to early game. Let's see if Deathpool can carry this, I guess. So that's going to be a dead... Um, at least I think that's going to be a dead uh, spider guy. We'll see if um, Deathpool can carry this. It's going to have to come from Deathpool. She can't carry this. There's actually no shot. Oh, yeah, there's no shot. Oh, shit. I didn't think this through. I need to bring, like, Quicksilver somebody in who couldn't get rewound. Damn, hard light's fast, even alone? Question mark? And the double taunt is annoying. She taunts into another taunt. Okay, hold on. What can I do here? We're not a striker. Team seems like a raid-only team. I think there's elements, like the, the PAV character seems like they could be pretty good. Uh, but, yeah... I, I don't know. It did seem a little a little pigeonholed, right? Oh, Jesus. Don't stun me. Oh, I wish I could spread that, but I don't have spread up. Do I keep this? I don't know if I keep this or not. Basic. I guess we're killing her. Nope, we're getting stunned, and then we're dead, aren't we? The slow. Oh, man. The, the sharing card is slow. Yikes. Fuck off. Helldivers later? No, not a chance. I need to work. Also, what up, Cross? I wish. I do wish, but I gotta work. Boy, I fucked the pooch on that one, huh? Alright, let's let's uh, let's use our, our Medulla Oblongatas here a little bit. You. You. Why? Why didn't I use 
different team to the one I just used. The one I just used was really ill-advised. What up, Jay? All right, we wasted everybody not named the Eternals. Cool. I gotta remember, I gotta stretch 10 teams out of this. All right, uh, we'll use like War Dogs to clean this up maybe. I leveled them up a little bit. How big are they now? Well, they might be one of my bigger teams. I hope you are too. Legendary Event aside, is Cosmic Ghost Rider worth building? No. Legendary Event aside, absolutely not. With Legendary Event in mind, yes, 100%. With the, ignoring it, absolutely not. He's kind of garbage. In War and Crucible. hi -ya! That's right, Black Panther. You get those assists, buddy. There's way full teams when build sky high. Well, those two idiots, yeah, they're great. All right, this is the like, this is the team I should have brought my new warriors against. Let's just use our uh, these guys, these dummies. My mustache is tickling my nostrils. Speed up. Kick in the face. Screw you, Hawkeye. Ooh. We got a Taunt and Terry over here. Finish them. Yeah, I would, I would definitely do Namor. You'll have more fun with them. Curious, Dorgie, how do you like this recent arena event? Know quite a few people who absolutely despise it. I hate the arena events. With arena collusion, it's just they should never do it. I find it an insult that they do it, actually. No Avengers, with these four in there. I do want to see if they can four-man this. I have no Ronin. Actually, Ronin's a big part of this team. I don't have anything on Tigra. I'm 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 trolling right now. Yeah, let's see. Let's land this stun here. Perfect. Let's see if Colson can. Oh, Mockingbird's huge, huh? I did build up Mockingbird for early tech use. Oh, Wolverine, you resin fuck. You resin fucktard, Wolverine. <laughs> That's so troll. Wolverine's a goddamn troll, dude. That's crazy. Get out of here. There we go. They should overhaul Arena rewards to get more cores. I think they should just get rid of Arena. Get rid of Arena or make it your highest rank you got during that day and then remove some of the cores because then they'll be giving out, you know, total more cores. Let's go in here, Pegasus with Vulture, sure. The Alliance Collusions, I forgot those. I was talking about the issues talking with uh, Black Knight, which I thought was fun. Game changing tune at the finest, yeah. One of these. One of those. One of these. And finally, one of those. I don't want to use too big a team for no reason. Gamora, Captain America. Oh, speaking of them, I built them up. Didn't I? Starbrand, Cosmic Ghost Rider, Captain America, where's Peggy? I kind of have, I, like, I, I did not get Black Knight unlocked, unfortunately, because the game trolled new players. Swolga, what up, Nader? 
Got rid of good rewards in the arena years ago. I think getting rid of rewards in the arena would be a great idea. If arena paid out based on your highest rank, it would fix the events and could end collusion. That's exactly right. I do think that they would still need to reduce the rewards because they don't want to give that many cores out to everybody. But I think that that's actually acceptable at that point. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'm maybe I'm talking too quickly on the uh, Ghost Rider. If you use so, here's what I would say, because the person who asked about Cosmic Ghost Rider. I would say Cosmic Ghost Rider is a decent investment if your alliance lets you use it on offense. If your alliance is a sweaty competitive war alliance and makes you use it on defense, not worth it all. Because the counters don't give a shit about Cosmic Ghost Rider. But on offense, Cosmic Ghost Rider does pretty good. He's an interesting character. They should probably give us more cores. Oh, maybe that's not a bad call either, Steven. They could give us more cores for the campaigns and possibly just increase the core cost for the orbs. But also, they're giving away a lot more yellow stars. So maybe they could just say fuck it and give away more cores anyway. What is it for Cabal? I like Striker on uh, Patriot. I like Raider on Namor, and I kind of like Striker on Leader. My leader is going to be a Striker to start out. Uh, let's do Bifrost. Do -do 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 -do. Where's Vol? Wait, where's Vol? Did I use her? Oh, there she is. That's not Vol. You're Vol. You're Morgan, and where's Loki? Ugh, baby Morgan does nothing. Oh, we didn't land the stun on Strange. I was kind of banking on that. He's got new character kit, though, so it makes sense that he has better resist. Resist that. Mega Bro's going to finish it off. I, uh, I lost one attack, right? So I should buy one. Make sure I do my 10. And then we'll be heading off to do the big boy crucible. That'll be fun. Bifrost is still worth building? Yeah, they are. After spider killers release. Yeah, I would I would say that uh yes. Bifrost are still worth building because they uh, are going to be useful in your raids for quite a while. Silver 3? I don't think so. No, I'm in the last silver... No. I'm in the last bronze bracket, Foghead. Uh, I started just getting matched up against people that were like 8 mil TCP. So they had like 600,000 teams on defense, and then they were punching down with like million power teams into my hand teams. So it's just... It's impossible to climb up. Unfortunately... But we'll get there. What up, Pat? We didn't get matched three weeks in a row. Oh, no. The horror. So what I have, I have to use Sinister 6, and I have to use... Uh, Sinister 6 can beat um, even my... Oh, actually, no shit. I just used Vulture. Eh? I don't think I can beat a um, Heroes for Hire, actually. I should have saved Vulture. Oh, I gotta know. I gotta know if this works. Some things in life you just gotta test. If I had the Hive My Team, this would win for sure, a thousand percent. But I gotta know if Extreme can do it. He's got like a billion resist, right? No, he can still be stunned. Okay. Sure, this has to work? I don't know, dude. It's a huge. It's a. They have gear tier 16. Like, this is a big, big punch up. I wouldn't be surprised if this fails. But I also wouldn't be surprised if it works, if that makes any sense. Hey, what the heck? He cleared his stun, but he kept his speed bar. What up, Wapo? 
Yeah, I, I won't be surprised either way if this fails or works. Next raid in about two months, we probably won't get a new Mystic raid team until July. Maybe that's true. I that that's based on like a time analysis. I don't know. I kind of think that they're still going to be useful for quite a while. All right. So how many of these guys have we got to kill? We're killing a lot of them. I know that much. And the heal block from uh, Cyclops, or not Cyclops, the heal block from um, Gambit is just crushing them. Oh, he's out of charges. Oh, yeah, we win. This account, uh, we're pa we're just past two months now. No, we must be bordering up on three. It's not boosted. No, that's why people like Boyalon and Tana, who started after me, they did they they kept resetting until they got a boost. Fucking cheaters, and they're passing me now. They're actually passing me in level. They're probably gonna be passing me in the content that they're doing. I know. I think Tana just did like Dark Dimension two. He put a video out on. And, like, I've been playing the account religiously, not missing stuff. And I wasn't able to get up there. So, pooey. Uh, this one doesn't have... Whatever. Let's do this. I just like all their stuff, Kevin. <laughs> I didn't want to go that far. I didn't, I didn't go that far. I, uh... Man... The, the fact that the boosted accounts is a thing is super lame. And I really hope they take it seriously and they fix it soon. I mean, it's about five months free to play. That's probably too long to wait and not build Bifrost. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely say that too. We're going to be doing our first uh, regular Doom raid here this week. So we are, we are currently doing the first strike, but we are going to do the regular Doom Raid this week. What made you want to start a new account? Um, I just had a lot of people saying, like, you're out of touch. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about when it comes to early game, mid game, all this game. I was like, all right, well, put my money where my mouth is. Let's do a new player experience. At the time, nobody else was doing it. Now everyone else is doing it. I'm a fucking trendsetter. And, uh, yep, yeah, I'm a trendsetter. Don't know what else to say. <clears throat> Alright, well that's it. Let's go log into the big boy account. Let's do some crucible. Want me to the Alliance? I'll bring my backpack and carry it. We that would ruin the, the new player experience. Just logging in. Let's go watch a new account grow, though. It is it is fun for sure. The fights don't last long enough. Big head, true. That's why he's such a good character. All right, we should be logging in. <laughs> Fuck it. All right, who do we got? We got Groot. God damn it, we got Groot, huh? So, let's see what we're going to do here. We're using Skrull on five. Cabal on two. Um, no Cyclops. Straight Hide Mind Vulture on one, I guess. That Bishop's going to help us. Kind of. 
depends if we push them too fast. Uh, on four, we're going to do some sort of apocalypse team. On five, big time new warriors. I guess we're doing Masters of Evil Apocalypse on four. And then on three, a Tangled Web team. Oh, that sucks. That super sucks. Hmm. That super sucks to have Tangled Web go into three. Because they all have immunity. It doesn't really work. What if we did Masters of Evil into one? No. What am I, who am I putting with my Cabal? That's another question I gotta figure out too. They gotta be faster than the Black Cat. I meant New Warriors big time in six, yeah. I don't know what I said. Skrull Doom on five. We got our team. I think we got a Master of Evil Apocalypse 4. We got to respect it. Three, we might have to War Dogs it. This was Evdog's old account. So here... Um, fuck, Eternals would suck here. Wouldn't really make any sense. Wait, there's no Moon Dragon here, so they won't take our buffs off. So if we do, like, an Eternals... Nova Tangled Web Team? I don't think we can lose. If we do Eternals, Tangled Web, and Nova, I don't think we can lose. Famous last words. In that count, I know I'm going to lose my three rooms, so I played every node three times in one three. Is that Dumper Pro? There you go. No, nah, it's Pro, dude. Make sure you clear. Ev's not playing, to my knowledge. Um, yeah, so the alternative is you try and one shot four without using um, Apocalypse, right? And you get Apocalypse Eternals 2 and call it a day. I think that's probably a terrible idea. What do I have on defense? Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably a terrible idea. I can maybe bring Doom into three. Like, if I bring Doom into stage three with, say, um, the Eternals and Tangled Web, that should be okay. Who am I going to bring with my Cabal? Let's make that team real quick. There's no Photon, right? Okay, so Emma works. Vulture's off the table. Skrull's off the table. Hive Mind's off the table. Omega Red. He's a little slow. It might be Archangel. Just Raider Archangel. Archangel Emma, maybe. Whoops. Lady Deathstrike is also super fast. Archangel does turn me to rewind, though. That'll be nice. Next season, it'll be Vulture. Don't you need Doom for the Spear State? Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Undying Doom versus... I'm not doing Undying Doom. No, no, no. That's... I hate that team. I think it's really, really bad. The scaling is wonky. Who gets called in for the attacks is wonky. No, I use the Scroll Doom team. Uh, So... I mean, I could do, like, Magneto, too, right? And blind everybody. But that doesn't really help me much. That doesn't really help me much, yeah. Who 
There's no photon, so we do get to remove some speed from them. There's a taunt, but I don't really care about the taunt. I'm going to use Archangel Special no matter what. That should give speed up, and hopefully that speed up is going to make my Cabal members go quickly. That's the thought. That's the prayer. Let's see. It'll be the 900,000 bunch up. Thoughts on NA Fury in 4, and uh, NA Fury in 4 will just get demolished. Like a high mine will crush it. Uh, New Warriors will crush it. Lots of things will crush it. Kestrel will crush it. From what I heard, MS uh, Miss Marvel still gets speed bar on spawn because vulnerable comes after speed bar. Well, that's not right. If that's how it's working, then the team is broken. Because you're supposed to be able to stop the scroll speed bar. That would make no sense. Unless it's the case of the left versus right side. Was that somebody who was using Miss Marvel on offense? And the Cabal was on defense? Happened to Duarte. Are you sure the Miss Marvel didn't just resist the, the, the um, vulnerable? Because if she resists the vulnerable, that's how it should play out. She does have defense up on spawn. Like, it might be worth making um, Patriot a skirmisher. Where are we right now? We're 13. We have no risk of going out of top 200, which is all we care about at this point. We kind of we kind of threw a little bit for content. We're having a little bit of fun. So let's keep that going. Spawn abilities might happen first than, pa than regular passives. No idea. My friend used Cabal versus Skrull SDBK today, and Skrull never took a turn. Granted, he used Apoc and Lizard too. Yeah, no, the, the the whole idea of the team is it stops the scroll from getting speed bar. Don't throw on this guy. I'm not throwing on the account, Scotty. I'm just I'm having fun. We're still gonna win. We're still in Grandmasters. We we actually can't get dropped out of Grandmasters, and this is the last week. I'm watching you. Okay, it's a matter of pride then. Okay, okay. I do have a plan, Scotty. I have a plan. All right. It's time for Cosmic Crucible. Your hero is fresh off the loss from Jutsi. His confidence is shaken. His mood is down. Can he turn it around for this final week and move on to season seven, his true winner self? I don't know. Guy, I listen, I don't know. Let's just get it done. <laughs> let's just win. Let's get it done. We're up against Groot. Groot's got a bunch of 3.2 million, million, million power teams. A couple 3.3 as well for good measure. This is going to be a fun one. Let's start it off uh, with stage two. Because if my team wins, we're making an entire video on Cabal. Let's go. Because I, I need Masters of Evil for the... Do I need Masters of Evil for the... Uh... Do I need Masters of Evil for Stage 4? Or can I run some sort of Red Hulk team into it? I guess is the question. If we ran like... Apocalypse, Red Hulk, Nova, Kestrel... Plus 1. Would that just be enough sheer power to beat the enemy Stage 4? It probably would be. Anyway, this is what I want to do. I still want to do this. All right, here we go with the Cabal. We're actually going to bring in Emma and Archangel because there's no Photon on this team. We've gotten mixed reports. I've heard that Miss Marvel, for some reason, might be getting her speed bar on spawn, which is not supposed to be the case. Cabal, the whole gimmick behind Iron Patriot is he stops the on spawn speed bar. No, she definitely got it, and she definitely did a rewind hitting my Archangel. Oh, I'm I'm instantly very upset right now, because that is not how that is supposed to go at all, and that's gonna ruin my turn meter. So now the scroll will take a turn. He's gonna do a nasty rewind too. Miss Marvel is slow as molasses. She shouldn't go. So the team is screwed. The team is screwed up. Is what it comes down to. So the team is super screwed up. 
That's not how this is supposed to happen. All right, let's do this. This will kill two. Let's see if the team can still just power their way through it. Lots of rewinds coming in. We're still going to power our way through it. But boy, oh boy, is this just not a not a good look for their new team to not work already. We got the trauma to land. Now, as long as Namor can go first and do a nasty rewind, then we'll be fine. And Namor does have the speed up. Skrull doesn't. Let's take these buffs off of him. Namor's going to hit a nasty rewind. We'll have to figure out what the heck is going on. That was honestly, still though, 900k punch up, kind of crazy. We got to figure out what's going on of hard like getting that speed bar. That shouldn't happen. You see, Skrull didn't get the speed bar. If Skrull got his speed bar, he would have went before the Miss Marvel does. So something is wrong with Miss Marvel's kit. Thanks, Steven. I'm going to send that to them right now. I'm glad we got through it. Stroll gets his from buffs. MSF gets it on spawn. But she gives it to herself. Hard light getting... Speed bar on spawn. Is this intended? I don't think that's supposed to happen. All right, let's keep it spicy with the punch-ups. We're going in with Skrull, Doom, Hawkeye, Minerva, and OG Falcon. Has Dorky Dad lost his mind? Or are you about to see some goddamn magic? All right, so first things first, you want to get offense up on your uh, Skrull. And you want to get the, uh, sorry, not offense up, safeguard on your Skrull. And you want to get disrupt on the wizard. So this is great. Then we want to do a rewind targeting the, well, at least hitting the goblin. Now we have offense up. Doom is now pushed, so he's going for the ride. There goes the last charge from Goblin, so let's get a Vulnerable on him. I personally like to get a Vulnerable on the Slayer. And then the last Vulnerable we'll throw over at the Doc Ock. Now's where it gets super duper spicy fantastic. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's throw this on the... Well, I meant to throw that on the Goblin, not on the Spider Slayer. So that's not the greatest start. Let's go kill the Goblin now. I don't think it matters. It really doesn't matter, apparently. There goes Dr. Doom. Finally, we'll do another rewind onto this uh, this lizard thing. And then if he's below 15%, this is why we bring Minerva. This is why we bring Minerva. Here we go. Yes. Kills through Death Proofs. Doesn't care about your safeguard. Nine Death Proofs plus safeguard against Minerva. Minerva wins that nine out of ten times. Hey, I just came back from a year hiatus. Should I be looking to finish off Apocalypse first? I don't have any of the new characters for Raid slash Arena. Uh, I would focus on your Raid Arena first. Your Apocalypse teams, if you're like a developed uh, account, like you've been played for a long time before you take a break, you should be okay. Yeah, friendly reminder to pay your Doki royalties if you use that counter with Hawkeye. Hawkeye is, uh, well, he did nothing there, but he is a uh, safety blanket for the team. All right. Apocalypse on four with not Masters of Evil. Then we get just Masters of Evil three. Could a Tangled Web Kestrel Red Hulk team beat four? I guess is the question. If we did Apocalypse, Red Hulk, Tangled Web, I think we would lose that. I think we wouldn't get the Apocalypse Punch and we would lose that. And Weaver Special does suck, yes. What if we just did Apocalypse with uh, Pegasus?
Yeah, I. So people are like, you should get the Alpha Flight uh, exclusive, and I, I specifically went to the developers and I said, listen, if there's going to be a Hawkeye rework or a team with Hawkeye in it, that's what I want my exclusive to be. Full Pegasus can be that, yeah. I'm thinking uh, Pegasus with Apocalypse for safety. The beauty of it is, now Red Hulk will rewind us. That's not that's not fun. That's not fun at all. could end up killing ourselves to the, the Red Hulk. We could also New Warriors yellow that. Lots of people in New Warriors yellow that. And then we could do a big time Tangled Web team on six. Hey, I'm about to start DD6 and was wondering if APOC is absolutely necessary. He's not absolutely necessary, but he is essential in not spending forever in the global section. Lightning Quicksilver and Gambit Forge and Nightcrawler for the... You'll be fine. I have Hive Mind. I was going to use Hive Mind on one. Hive Mind Voltron one. You too, Benjamin. Well, not have a great stream. Have a great night. I was going to use um, Hive Mind Voltron one. Because I... Uh, part of me says just use Apocalypse Master Evil on four. The other part of me says straight new warriors for. A Bob is still top three in the game. Yeah, that too. Full Extreme is getting through global without apocalypse. Yeah, I believe it. Bringing those three into uh, Dark Dimension Six, I think you'd be perfectly fine because we never had those options. Uh, but like, I still wouldn't skip apocalypse. New Warriors with big time on six is actually really nice. So. Hmm. Like I know full New Warriors can beat four because somebody has done it to mine. But I think there's there's RNG on the deflex. However, the Red Hulk will still die because he's adjacent to to uh, Black Knight. Or at least he should still die. Yeah, I get new worries. Apocalypse four. Then I just got to figure out what I'm going to do for six, which would be like a. A Tangled Web, big time Eternals team, probably. Yeah, I would do a Tangled Web, Eternals, Apocalypse team. Or, Tangled Web, Eternals, big time team on six. <laughs> big time would take the revive off of Thor and Vol. Then Weaver would stun the Vol because Weaver would go before her. And then the Eternals will pop off. Probably get a double tap. And if they don't get a double tap, then it'll actually be better for me. Then we'll do more rewinds. We'll have the safety of the uh, Weaver charges. Yeah. Yeah, we could just do New Warriors Apocalypse on four. Let's do that instead. Let's give it a shot. I'm excited to never have to worry about it again, though. All right, here we go. All right, for this stage four, we're going to hit it with our New Warriors Apocalypse. I'm super excited to never have to do this again uh, in stage four. I hate not having turn one ults. Um, but let's see how this goes before we celebrate. Uh, we did get the taunt off, so that's actually huge. There will be, obviously, uh, taunt and energy coming. But for now, I could target the Red Hulk. He also got a vulnerable, which, is me which basically means we're about to take out the biggest threat the enemy has. Uh, I could spread the bleed from the Red Hulk, or I could just target the Red Hulk to get stuff on the big time. 
Uh, we're going to spread off the, the Red Hulk because we want to put Disrupt on Green Hulk, right? Ooh, ooh. Uh, this is going pretty good for me. Not going to lie, guys. This is actually going pretty good for me so far. <laughs> New Warriors are pretty damn good, even without their ults, oddly enough. Let's go ahead and kill him here because he cannot be revived. And now he's stunned. Just perfect. And I assume we got energy, because we have the death pool giving energy out. Super, I'm super tilted that that fucking Black Knight is at full life right now, though. Uh, this would be wasted if we use it now. We do have a perma kill coming in from both death pool and from Apocalypse. This, ooh, this may not be enough damage. No, it is. Uh, I want her gone. I just, I'm just tired of looking at her stupid face. This will do a nice little rewind. No, it won't. Hopefully, this will kill. Maybe with the bleeds. Yes, with the bleeds. Okay, perfect. Um, boy, it should not be that close. <laughs> That's all because of that stupid Black Knight. There's no shot. A New Warriors Apocalypse team should be anywhere close to losing. Which I think we almost were, honestly. When Black Knight went to full life and my New Warriors were on the death's door, that was actually kind of close. I don't think this team should ever give my team struggles. I think this room was was way too powerful when you think of Black Knight. It, I mean, it's just Black Knight's pass was way too powerful at the end of the day. But, you know, power creep, power leap, power jump off a cliff. Stun Valkyrie so her passive doesn't rock? No, because Valkyrie's going to die. Let's do that one next. Oh, I have Red Hulk, too, I could use. Um, I have Kestrel I could use, too. Shit. Shit. We'll use Red Hulk with Massive Evil, maybe? I have too many tools. I think the Eternals are still a good call here, though. The, the question would be, like, do you take out the Eternals and go, like, Red Hulk Kestrel? Shit, taking out the Eternals and going Red Hulk Kestrel sounds kind of fire, actually. Nah, let's lean to the rewinds. Fuck, Kestrel sounds kind of fire here, though. Red Hulk would do a 20% rewind, and then Kestrel could be popping people off. If I bring Red Hulk instead of 2099, we'll get the revive off of Vol plus rewind her, still letting my Weaver go first. And then Big Time could take the revive off of two of them. Um, but I think Battery Bill is actually slower than Dormammu, so that wouldn't really work. Well, I could take the revive off of Thor to start off, rewinding the Dorm too. And then target the vault to get the revive off of her and then beta rebuild that way. That would work. Because what is 2099? He's going to give me defense down, but Icarus is going to give that to me anyway. Let's try this. This team has actually burnt me so many times. This uh, Asgardian Dormammu team. We're getting a little freaky with it. We took out 2099 because... I, uh, I'm actually going to let Icarus flip everything anyway. So the idea here is that we are going to be doing rewinds with Red Hulk. Also stealing revives, right? We're going to steal revives with Big Time as well. And then the Eternals will hopefully double tap? Question mark? Omega lull? See how it goes? So this is important. Uh, we're going to take the revives off of... <sighs> Beta Ray Bill and Vol. All right. And then we're going to take this revive off of Thor. All right. Now we're going to try and stun Trauma here. We didn't land it, but we did do damage. This probably kills the Valkyrie. If it doesn't kill the Vol, we're in trouble. So should I stall out? Thor did keep his, he deflected it. Should I then just stall out? 
Well, Icarus lost the offense up, so this probably doesn't kill the Valkyrie anyway. This might. I'm doing it anyway, though. All right, we're good. I don't want to hit that uh, that Valkyrie. Yeah, let's do this. Perfect. The problem here is if this doesn't kill Vol, then we're in trouble. I'm going to basic. I'm going to basic because I don't want to kill too many Asgardians because I, I wanted to stop that from happening. Okay, this isn't the end of the world. Let's kill the Dormammu. Okay, Dormammu's dead. And we do have the Weaver charge to protect us for the most part here. Let's perma kill the Valkyrie. Ooh, no, we can perma kill him, can't we? This gives offense up. Sure does. Oh, let's go for it. Leroy Jenkins. Let's freaking go. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> All right, let's do one of these. One of these. That was very, very particular kill order uh, we did there when it came to, or not kill order, but hit order. When it came to the beginning of the fight to make sure we got the revives of the people we wanted them off of. And even then, it got deflected on the Thor Infinity War. But we got the permakill. So, we win. Feeling pretty good about that one, too. Alright, let's get this one out the way. You know what? I think I'm going to miss using this Hive my Team. I really do. This Hive my Team is really fun. I think they're still relatively strong. I worry about them next season without having somebody like Vulture to give speed up, though, right? That's obviously um, a huge loss to them. But let's see how this goes. We need, obviously, to put the uh, ability block over on Forge. That's good. This Bishop is actually going to fuel... Oh. The Bishop dropped low, but then immediately healed up, I guess? How else would Rogue have gotten the... Uh... That thing she got. All right, anyway, let's get the offense up on our guys. All right, Gobby comes next. Gobby's going to push a bunch of them, especially the defense down Rogue, which is really nice to have. All right, so that's that's a kill. So we need Vulture to pop off now. All right, Red Goblin. We pushed too many people, so Red Goblin's actually going to take yet another turn. Don't love that. In fact, actively dislike that. Ooh, this is going to be bad. Ooh, that's bad. Let's go for it. We got to do as much damage to Rogue as we can. And we killed that bitch. That bitch is dead. She's fucking dead. All right. Stun Gambit or stun Nightcrawler. We got to stun the Gambit. There's, is that not really an option? Turn me to rewind. Offense up. Oh, that Gambit was so close to dead. Oh, we have Striker on Vulture. I don't know why, but I'm thankful. Uh, there is a ticking clock now to kill this um, forge, which is fine. Here's the ult. Th there is always a chance that Nightcrawler just solos you, right? Which is which is actually a very big concern. So let's try and not let that happen. The dodges. Oh, Gwenpool, you're my fucking hero. You're my fucking hero, Gwenpool? Ah, uh, Scott, he's also my hero for switching Vulture to Striker for a particular war match. Let's freaking go! I was not ready for the Striker. <laughs> the Striker Vulture hit. Alright, this is going to be the last one. We're just going to straight Master of Evil this. Um, I can bring in somebody. I'll bring in uh, Nova for an extra stun. Who else would I bring? Nobody really, right? Maybe like a Kestrel, I guess, but she doesn't really do much. Maybe like a Hella? I guess this is, it is what it is. Number one, Shaker Iso is fair. All right, and the final hit, we got a very, very big Infinity Watch Quicksilver team. We're going to hit it with our Masters of Evil Nova team. Um, yeah, and not much to say here, except uh, hopefully Masters of Evil is going to outpower these guys. 
I do think they will. Um, we're going to start by trying to get rid of the... Um... Man, this is a tough one. I guess we're going to go for Philavel here to start it off. We're going to stay away from the Gamora because we don't get it stuck behind a taunt. And I don't want to give slow to the Quicksilver because that would be bad in other ways. So let's do this here. This will be another rewind on the three of them, which is good. And then Nova's going to get a stun off. So, yeah, let's do the rewind on the three here. All right. Um, we're going to try and kill the Philavel still. All right, so dead. And then Nova. Ah, damn it. Nebula went, and she ended up giving Disrupt to Homie, which is actually the worst buff she could have given him. So let's just take that off him so he doesn't extend it. But, yeah, literally the worst buff he could have got there take that back maybe that's the worst buff he could have got there we're gonna see in a second um hmm i might just basic here i'm just gonna try and kill the quicksilver i don't want to let him take turns i think that was the right call i know the alt would have done some nice rewinds and stuff like that but i did feel a little bit of pressure to take out the quicksilver we can't get perma kills anyway because of safeguard but we can get the first life off adam warlock we can't stun Let's do this. That'll take a rewind off of Gamora. Oh, wow. Adam Warlock has more damage than Gamora on this team. Did not expect that at all. All right. Let's get a ability block upon uh, this guy. Let's alt because we can. Good stuff. All right. Yeah, we're good. I don't know why I did this, but I guess it does a little bit of a heal. That's kind of nice. She's super immune to defense down. That's why I didn't land. But she's not immune to Titania. Punching her in the freaking teeth. All right. Let's see how we did. I'm feeling pretty happy about this one. This felt like a very clean crucible. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 162 does not feel like it should be a good score. Uh, but it felt like good attack. So let's see what happened here. This attack was pretty flawless. This one was crazy that it worked as well as it worked, right? Um, this one felt good, 1915. This one went off the rails for sure. This one went great, 2020. This one actually went pretty good too. Now my opponent does not have to deal with a scroll. They do have to deal with a superior six while not having their own superior six or their scroll they could apocalypse it but that's kind of sketchy they'll new warriors one tangled web two they'll have to try apocalypse doom on three which means they're going to straight cabal four that's not a problem they can beat infinity watch a lot of teams they get new warriors six or they're going to new warriors one right so they'll hide mine six the path is there uh we'll have to see how they do when they do it uh, Groot's a good player, so I'm expecting uh, a good showing from him. Um, I kind of wish I wasn't streaming, because I don't like it when they see how well I did, or how bad I did. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Bye for now. I still gotta post the Jutsi video. I haven't edited it. Last, last week I went, I went off, or last weekend, and last week I shut down. So it is what you guys are saying. The on-spawn stuff still happens. That doesn't feel good. All right, we got to claim this for the power of Scotty. And we're going to go into the bookmarks. We got 118 there, so that's pretty low. We got 51, 91, 101, 83, 58. Looks like we're farming some support stuff. Nope. Looks like we're farming some controller stuff. Kind of. And then... Looking good on those cats, kind of. 3K. This is the lowest one. God damn it. 
pretty farmed at all. But of course. There we go. On spawn passive first, then regular passes go after. Yeah, I guess that's right, Steven. Ev still does Groot CCs? I don't think so. Let's be real, guys. Did Ev Dog ever do his own CCs? <laughs> he doesn't even have Zubin on speed dial. He's got Zubin hotkey to his, his uh, pickup a bit, his pickup button. <laughs> like he opens his phone and it speed dials Zubin. Do you think we get the special abilities in the raid shop for Nova Black Cat and Green Goblin? Green is persistent. What up, dude? Uh, I think we already got them from for Black Cat and Nova, but Green Goblin should come soon. All right, so Jutsi admitting that people break NDA to him. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, Should they struggle? They get... Well, right now, Superior 6 is getting defense up on spawn. They won't after this. They get deflex? Does Lizard give them all deflex? So they could deflect it, right? So yeah, any team that gets deflex, I imagine Cabal could struggle against. And uh that also carries over to like um a Captain America Skrull team, right? If Skrull blocks, the vulnerable get fucked. That too. Yeah, that too, Pat. I guess they can't get vulnerables anyway. But why would you use Cabal on Sinister Six or Superior Six? When you could use Skrull against Superior 6 and then Cabal against the enemy Skrull, like I just did. Plays out pretty good. You have elite credits by doing the highest difficulty of raids, Groot. I don't know it's taking so long. I did all the login stuff and it's not. There we go. Yeah, if Goblin gets his speed bar, it's over. Sounds like Goblin would get his speed bar on spawn anyway. So it, it wouldn't work even if he did land the Vulnerables. So it's really only to count. So it doesn't even counter new Warriors then. So Cabal on defense probably sucks. Right? Like, Cabal on defense is probably super vulnerable. There's a video for you. Sounds like Skrull on defense probably sucks. Did I do raids yet? Simon says nope. Mm, I've been trying to get Union Jack unlocked all weekend and he's not showing up in the store. He's still not there, the son of a bitch. I need Union Jack to replace Kestrel here because this team fails a lot. Uh, are you trying to creep back into top 10 before the season ends? There's no reason to, is there? Just win to win. Winning because winning's fun. Any info and out of time to bumps? Zero info. I imagine soon. And you can't tell us when the new CC rules come out, but do you by chance have any videos made with a set programmed release? <laughs> uh, no, because I'll tell you this. Of course, we're going to have videos coming out on it. Of course, they let us do a play test. I'll tell you, no content creator that I got to face put up a defense worth showing. And so I'm pretty salty about it because I put up a fucking awesome defense for people to showcase. And... You know your boy is spiteful. If I see a content creator put a video out showing my defense, which was actually interesting, and they're just running over it with everything on offense because they kept everything on offense, and I'm, I am I have no choice but to fuck around because on defense, like, what the fuck else am I going to do when I'm facing, like, 
season three teams. Anyway, I'm a little salty about it. If you couldn't tell. So your your boy might go to war with people. Cause it's to test, man. Like you don't you don't need to keep your fucking superior six to to do this like little tournament thing. It's not about showing Sinister Six. It's about showing people the new rules with the new team. It's not about fucking winning on the playtest. It's so fucking stupid. The mentality of these dummies, these selfish fucking dummies get into sometimes. I like swear to God. I can't. I can't. I just can't. <sighs> Did you end up finishing the Mars 2.5? No. No, we unlocked a new character, then, and then we, we played a little bit, but we got a long ways to go, I think. I think there's probably another five hours of content there, unfortunately. You know what game I do have pulled up right now, though? I got the climbing game pulled up. You guys want to do that for five minutes real quick? Uh, me and, hmm, I don't know how much I can say. I tried to coordinate with a certain envoy, uh, who has a like-minded, um, idea, and we matched, and then they took down the playtest. And I was like, I'm going to freak out. Okay, we're gonna do this for five minutes. I'm gonna throw myself off, and we'll, uh, hold on, let me throw myself off this side, I think. We'll start at the beginning. Uh, yeah, so the, the one person who put up a good defense, I was like, fuck, and then we couldn't, uh, yeah. Ugh. Damn it. I can't even, I can't even throw myself out of this one. I need to, like, climb up and jump out. God damn it. I still can't jump. Could you believe it? I still play this game periodically because I'm still trying to learn how to jump. I keep climbing up to the same point and then I throw myself off because I still can't jump. I still can't jump. I don't know what to say, guys. Jump into this game. You can get 75% through the game without having to actually learn how to jump. It's super weird. And then you're screwed. Jutsi knows more than he should. <laughs> oh come on why'd you bend over like that stupid all right i might just i might just shut the game off if it's gonna be like this i want to throw myself off a much better end oh come on why are you falling over i would never do anything with Dulome. Just let me fall out. I just want I want to go all the way to the beginning, okay? Come on. You beat that one cave level of the escape? Nah, it's impossible. Come on. Okay, we'll just turn the game off. Hold on. Final time, and if we don't get it, we're done. My, it's, it's the fucking desk is in the way. Like, ugh, it's so tilting, man. The control, oh boy. Wait, I said final jump, didn't I? All right, this is it. Yep, this is it. Let's hit the rage quit button. And we're back to Marble Shake Force. Alright, here we go. Uh I got nothing to do. I wanna make a video. I wanna make a video uh contrasting Rage Shadow Legends. You guys know this, because we kinda made this list together. Talking about um, the differences in the game. Um So I might do this with you guys to give you an idea of what the difference is. I already got it all set up slides and everything. Um and then I might just go edit it off screen. I'm basically, I'm just going to talk over slides and then I go pull footage and do it that way. And just edit the footage in. I'm not going to put too much effort into it. Um, I think the Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship is probably going to immediately die before it ever starts. Um, it's just a saturated market. It's hard to, hard to break into. Um, but I really like the game, so I might just keep playing it anyway. We'll see. Time is money, though. So there's that. Are there only two CCs that take CC that seriously that would set a defense enough? No, there's there's more. I just don't group with them. Basically, we get asked, hey, who wants to take part in this tournament? 
it's expected that you will actually participate if you say yes. And everyone says yes, a few people say no, then everybody, including the people that said no, get thrown into the pool, and then nobody does it, because I don't know. I'm sure everyone has their reasons. Anyway, let me uh, let me bust this let me bust this video out real quick, because I think I'm gonna put this one up on the Marvel Strike Force channel actually. There are two juggernauts in the hero collector space, in my opinion, and that is Raid Shadow Legends and Marvel Strike Force. I don't count Star Wars Galaxy Heroes because, honestly, if you could use Force, why would you use a lightsaber? Why would you use a play toy? No, hold on. I, I didn't think that through. I got to find a way to discredit Star Wars Galaxy Heroes. All right, I got it. There are two juggernauts in the hero collector space of the mobile gaming industry, and that is Raid, Shadow Legends, and Marvel Strike Force. I do not count Star Wars Galaxy Heroes, not because it's not a successful big game, but because I heard Lord of the Rings was based on it, and it was a carbon copy, and I played Lord of the Rings, and I wanted to unalive my... Okay, hold on. I can't, I can't go that hard. <laughs> Later, cat. Okay, I can't go that hard. There are two juggernauts in the mobile gaming hero collector space. <laughs> I read Steven's uh, message. Libel suit coming, yeah. There are two juggernauts in the hero collector of mobile industry space, and those are Raid Shadow Legends and our game, Marvel Strike Force. I don't count Star Wars Galaxy Heroes because I heard the Lord of the Rings games was based on Star Wars Galaxy Heroes, and that game sucked. I don't know how Star Wars Galaxy Heroes is successful at all if it has anything like the Lord of the Rings game was. In this video, I'm going to compare and contrast what I think are the most important aspects of this sort of game. Hold on. I just not even going to bring it up. I'm not even going to bring up Star Wars Galaxy Heroes. In my opinion, there are two juggernauts in the hero collector space in the mobile industry, and that is Raid Shadow Legends and Marvel Strike Force. Now, these games often get compared against each other, and I figured it'd be a good idea, since I play both, to contrast what I think are the most important aspects in a game when you are a daily player, whether it be casual, hardcore, or whatever the case may be. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I do cover both these channels. Descriptions to the Raid Shadow Legends channel will be in the description below. Go ahead and let me re-record this. Oh my god. I agree with you, Gerd. And that's going to come up. That's definitely going to come up. There are two juggernauts in the Marvel... Nope. There are two juggernauts in the Hero Collector space in the mobile industry, and they are Raid Shadow Legends and Marvel Strike Force. I played Star Wars Galaxy Heroes, didn't like it, it would not compete on this list in my opinion. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to make these games compete against each other in what I think are the key aspects in any player's gaming experience, and figure out which of these games is actually on top. Now, I do cover both these games every day. If you want to follow Raid Shadow Legends material, that will be in the comment section below, as this is our Marvel Strike Force channel. Uh, but right now, let's get into this this competition here. Oh, that was horrible. My fucking my nose hairs, my whiskers are itching me. <laughs> my goddamn whiskies, bro. Okay. There are two juggernauts in the hero collector space in the mobile industry, and they are Raid Shadow Legends and Marvel Strike Force. I'm not going to be talking about Star Wars Galaxy Heroes because, for me personally, after playing Lord of the Rings: The Carbon Copy. It would not make it on this list. Now, I do cover both of these games daily. So, if you want great Raid Shadow Legends content, as we are on the Marvel Strike Force channel, hit the link in the description below to join. And if it's your first time player, you get a bunch of goodies for using my link. But right now, let's go make these two games compete against each other. Oh, uh, that's not that's not what the first one's supposed to be. Hold on. Theory crafting's up there. This one should be screen time. Okay, so this is wrong then. We had a, a duplicate. We had a doopy doop. The old doopy doop. There we go. 
Have Ben Vulture take out Secret Defenders? I would say no. For the most part, no. I wouldn't do it, Para. All right, let's start with what every gamer wants to know when they're playing a game long term, especially a live service game, screen time. Now, both of these games will take out an extraordinary amount of your time, so you might only have to pick one, which is why this video is probably going to be appealing to you. Now, for Marvel Strike Force, your time in game is going to be variable. A casual player can play up to 30 minutes, hit all their markers, and bounce for the day. A hardcore player who's going to be doing raids, arena, crucible every single time theory crafting trying to win same with war you're probably looking at 2.5 hours and if you're in leadership in marvel strike force you're looking at about six hours and that does not include when they run these pop-up events like sword satellite or a scourge event where you might be playing for 12 hours a day just because you could do that and it's kind of fun but that'll be your personal choice right you could casually go in there sim everything and then bounce now for raid shadow legends it's definitely event-based how much time you're going to put in. Again, casual player, you could probably put in about 30 minutes, but really more like 45 minutes just to hit all your uh, quests and your, your daily objectives and then bounce out. If you're hardcore and you're going to spend all your energy and keep up to date and you're going to log in every single time to collect your, I believe it's called the Guardian Ring, the level ups, you're probably looking at about two hours. And hardcore, especially when events run, you might be looking at 10 hours because... There is no auto sim feature in Raid Shadow Legends. They have a multi-battle feature, but your device and the app needs to be running the entire time. So though you may be playing for 10 hours, you're definitely not engaged for 10 hours. Next would be agency. So Marvel Strike Force, I think, hands down has this category on lock. You can directly farm the characters you want to get. Now, not all characters are available on release. In fact, no characters available on release. They get farmable after about four months, and then they stay farmable. So every character that is like more than four months is farmable in game right now in one way, shape, or form. Except for legendary characters, apocalypse, you got to kind of build up your characters to get those. Same with like a new character like Mephisto. Now in Raid Shadow Legends, that is not the case. You cannot directly farm characters for the most part. There are character shards in certain stores. There's going to be fusion events you could work towards, but that's going to be an event-based unlock. For the most part, you're opening up these shards and you're hoping to hit the jackpot. You're hoping for the epic characters or legendary character that's going to be useful for whatever your current project is. Now, that sounds horrible, but there's an upside to it. In the theory crafting department. So for Marvel Strike Force, I got to give it a pretty low 6 out of 10, maybe even 5 out of 10, because there is cookie cutters everywhere. Unless you are a super hardcore player, probably 90% of your game is cookie cutter teams. Your raid teams, cookie cutter. Your arena, when a new character is released in the arena, there's about a one to one and a half week period where people are feeling it out. And then for the next three, four months, the arena is a set meta. War, you're basically always using cookie cutter teams where you might slot in one character here, one character there, and then you're fighting them with cookie cutter teams where you're subbing in one character here, one character there, unless you're at the highest end, in which case war does become a lot more theory crafting, a lot more trickery, but that is for like the top, I don't know, 0.01% of players. So I did give it a little bit of a lower score there. For Raid Shadow Legends, the theory crafting is almost endless. So we talked about the bad RNG nature of unlocking characters during Shadow Legends. They make up for that with little to no power creep on their characters. So the longer you're playing, you're just naturally getting characters, whether you're getting them from promo codes, from RNG orb pulls, from fusion events, from whatever the case may be. That character that you got in the first year of Raid Shadow Legends is probably just as valuable to you now you know, five years later, because they just had their five-year anniversary celebration. And I think that is such a crazy, beautiful thing. And it invites theory crafting like crazy. Now, they don't even have these cookie-cutter teams. They've introduced these faction-like teams, but it's so lukewarm that it doesn't take away from your theory crafting. You're definitely better off putting an amazing character in there. Stats, the reason the power creep isn't really a thing is because you have RNG elements in where your stats come from. So you can get attack percent or flat attack, defense percent, flat defense, speed, accuracy, crit, crit rating, uh, those sort of things on your gear, your nine pieces of gear total. Depending on what gear you put on what character, they're going to function in a different way. They'll go first. They'll set up your opponent to take a fall first. They'll go before your big nuker to put defense down or to give that character speed bar. There's way more theory crafting because of the random stat generation. That is both a blessing and a curse. As for newer players, it's definitely harder to get your mind wrapped around it at first. 
One thing I would say is there are multiple solutions in Raid Shadow Legends, whereas we just had a Sword Satellite in Marvel Strike Force. So let's look at Sword Satellite. Uh, the top floor had about five solutions, right? Uh, but it was always like one particular character fit that bill. So that would be like a five solutions to the one problem. In Raid Shadow Legends, you probably have more like 50 solutions to the one problem. It depends on what characters you pulled, who you put your investments in, and what you're trying to accomplish. So Raid Shadow Legends definitely takes it on the theory crafting side. Cost and free to play viability. Let's get this out of the way right away. The mobile industry is very expensive. If you want all the new characters, you will be spending a lot of money. So I'm more leaning towards what is possible free to play in these games. So from our strike force to get a new character, you're looking at a hundred dollars, but veteran players will always unlock every new character. This has to be the case in Marvel strike force. Otherwise, because everything is very cookie cutter, the game would die if people didn't at least get the unlock for these characters, but they don't get them at the biggest level where they do become capable of performing very interesting traits. Now that doesn't include legendary characters, though I will say ever since Morgan Le Fay, if you were a veteran player, that is a player who was playing a year before Morgan Le Fay, and if you haven't quit or taken a break, you should be able to unlock every single legendary character that happened since Morgan Le Fay. All right, so for Raid Shadow Legends, you're looking at like $100 for two shard pulls. And the shard pulls have a 6% chance of pulling a legendary character. And there's no there's no knowing if that legendary character will help you on your current task. Like, you want to do better on the clan boss right now? Well, your legendary character may have absolutely nothing to do with clan boss and be more about the Doom Tower or more about Arena or whatever the case may be. So that's kind of tough. It's a tough bridge, right? But depending on who you pull, you might want to just shift your priorities. Uh, your pricing in Raid Shadow Legends varies based on your spending. So I did spend quite a bit on Raid Shadow Legends, and I noticed, and then I looked it up, Raid Shadow Legends then offers you more expensive offers, but they also have more things in them, which I thought was interesting, but it just sort of promotes more and more and more spending. So uh, if you want to unlock every single new character, every single event character in Raid Shadow Legends, it will get extremely expensive. But free to play, still have a lot of fun in Raid Shadow Legends. So I am now 100% free to play. I have so many tools to start working on uh, the Sand Demon, to work on Nightmare Campaigns, to work on the Doom Tower, to work on uh, the Cursed City. And I got most of these free to play from RNG Shard Pulls. I just happened to pull a couple fun epic characters that through my community I learned were really good. I learned what they can do. And now I have like three years worth of content in which like, oh, I'm gonna put this stuff into this character. Oh, now next is this character, next is that character. And I have like 30 characters that are like that right now. So I am set on content right now because the characters, they don't get power creeps. So I do think there's a, a good free to play environment in Raid Shadow Legends. Content type. Okay, so Marvel Strike Force, very seasonal and cyclical. What do I mean by that? There are war seasons where there is like a, a buffed up team. Like it used to be Rebirth, now it's New Warriors, the next one will be whatever the case may be. The war meta will get established fairly quickly it might even only switch one or two teams during that season for the vast majority of players again not at the highest end and then that's just the case for four months so it gets a little stale crucible now they're doing something really interesting with crucible right now where they're only having it last a month and a half so it doesn't really have time to get stale but we get the room rules it lasts for a month and a half then we get the new room rules but still all the meta teams just find which room they're going to be meta in raids we get a raid, it lasts about six months. We do the same thing daily. The arena, again, it gets determined about 12 days after the, the last arena character gets let go. We go from there. A new campaign gets released. It's autoplay for most veteran players. So it's very it's very cyclical and it can become pretty stale. Uh, but then you get some amazing pop of content. You get like the Clin Tower. You get Sword Satellite. You get what is hopefully gonna be Battle World will be very interesting. So. There's definitely, there's not a lack of fun in Marvel Strike Force. I don't want to give that impression. And then when a new season starts, it is very, very exciting. Uh, it's though heavy, heavy meta base. So you have your meta war teams, your meta crucible teams, your meta arena teams, your meta raid teams, and you go from there, right? So there is that aspect. Now for Raid Shadow Legends, I don't know. I haven't, I've only been playing for about two and a half months right now, but I haven't seen a game mode pop up that would rival Sword Satellite or Clint Tower. Everything's very static. Mind you, there's like 
50 bosses and they all kind of require something different and they all have about 20 different difficulty levels and then they do have the doom tower which i guess is pretty equivalent and you got to climb your way up and you got to fight different bosses every 10th stage and they have the curse city which is this giant map and you need to go through it and then you have the faction wars which in marvel strike force would be the equivalent of um every single tag has a campaign so like inhumans have a campaign web warriors have a campaign and you got to beat again 20 levels of that and you can farm it whenever it's available it's available in like a seven week uh rotation kind of thing so there's static content but it's immense insanely immense and there's no meta once again whatever best character you pull that does freezes that does sheep that does stun they're going to work in where the best character who does the same thing would work just to a slightly lesser degree so there's no meta. It all depends on what you then put into that character, what kind of gear you put on that character, what kind of ascensions you do, uh, your awakenings, that sort of thing. So the no meta really kind of blends in well with the immensity of the static content. Um, I would I would say both of these games are equally fun to me as far as content goes, where I'm at right now. In-game events. Okay, I have a beef with Marvel Strike Force events. I do. They used to be 100% free-to-play completable if you put in a lot of work and you blitzed your butt off and you did all that kind of stuff. Then they switched it to, like, the final milestone wasn't completable. And then a few months passed, and it's like, okay, the final two milestones were completable free-to-play. Now it's like the final four milestones aren't completable free-to-play. So you're still getting about 75% done if you're a sweaty tryhard, but then you're probably going to have to drop 20 or 50 bucks to get it done. There's always events running and it like you just you can't do them all like you, even if you hoarded you literally couldn't 100 percent any of the events unless there is a core aspect to it so you are basically pigeonholed into spending money to complete the events to get the best rewards at the bottom or getting about 75 percent which i will say is there are very healthy rewards in there and it still feels good to be taking part in those for Raid Shadow Legends events, so Raid Shadow Legends did not drop the Horde meta. So you need to pick and choose which events you're going to partake in Raid. So right now there is a Sand Demon tournament going on. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to completely ignore it because I don't have a Sand Demon proper team built up. If I were to put all of my free-to-play resources into that Sand Demon thing for the three days that it ran for, I probably would get about 40% of the milestones and there's just not enough in there to interest me for that. But if I'm picky, and there is, there's soon going to be, I believe it's the Fire Knight boss event. If I put everything into that event, I can easily 100% complete it, and I'll get all those rewards, and I might even compete in the leaderboard for that event. So in Raid Shadow Legends, you pick and choose which events you want to really take part in, and you can go for it. Now... I talked earlier about these fusion events that they have for these amazing characters, like Armand's The Magnificent was the most recent one. I've been told from a good friend, a good free-to-play player, that he has never missed a fusion character since he started playing the game free-to-play with the mindset of keeping a lot of his resources in order to get those fusions unlocked. He hasn't missed a single one. So I think that is really, really important and really good for the health of the game. Game Life Balance. This one is tough. This is a tough one. If you're a Marvel Strike Force fan, you know exactly why this is tough. If I gave this a 0 out of 10, I definitely could, right? So you can't miss a day of Marvel Strike Force. You simply can't. If you miss a day, your alliance will lose alliance war. They won't finish their raid. They won't get their donation. And you will eventually be kicked out of your alliance. So you will lose that camaraderie that you built with the 23 other people the only reason it doesn't get a zero out of 10 is because characters are now farmable like four to six months after being released if you decide to take a six month break and you tell your alliance like hey guys i'm just leaving i might come back in six months you come back you're not gonna your game's not gonna be dead you're definitely gonna be very far behind but you will eventually unlock those characters probably within a month of coming back the way that they run events and they have new characters coming uh, into very farmable locations like there's never there's never a new campaign which is so difficult to beat that you can't get to those characters to farm. So that's why, like, I didn't give it a zero. In fact, we could have given it a little bit better. But but the fact that, like, you'd have to give up your alliance if you need to go on a week vacation, I can't. I just can't. Raid Shadow Legends, on the other hand, 
Uh, if I didn't log into Raid Shadow Legends for three days, nobody would really notice unless there was a clan versus clan. Um, I could go on a cruise with my wife and my kids, and I could put the phone down and, and not worry about it. There's 30 people in the clan. They'll help out. Um, maybe I'm just not sweaty enough in the game, but I, I've definitely not seen people in my clan slacking and being like, hey, you, you know, get to it. Because we're still beating our clan bosses with like 10 people attacking. We're still beating the majority of clan bosses. We're still competing clan versus clan. If we don't win, we don't get the rings. Who cares? As long as they hit these sweet milestones. Um, so I, I think that just the game life balance in Raid Shadow Legends blows Marble Strike for side of the water. Now what I will say is when there's an event, like there was this dragon event to get Armand's The Magnificent unlocked. And I had to farm it and I put it on my computer. Because at least there's an app. You can put it on your computer. And I had the dragon fight running, I think, for 18 hours. Because I, I had, like, 1,200 energy. I was like, okay, go dragon fight, go. Now, I beat the event. I got Armand's. I'm super happy about it. I didn't actually have to play the game. But if I had to do that on my phone during the, the course of the day, like, I couldn't minimize the game because then the fight doesn't happen in the background, that would be very unhealthy. But I don't think that's the majority of what people go through when they play Raid Shadow Legends. When you really learn it, apparently there's a lot of auto-clicker stuff going on, too. Um, which I haven't looked into, but makes sense with how much auto simming or auto play that happens. I do think that Raid Shadow Legends takes the cake when it comes to the game life balance. All right, the new player experience. I started a new Marvel Strike Force account because I was told that this was a horrible, horrible experience for new players, and I wanted to see it. Um, it was pretty good. So the new catch and mechanics. Uh, that they just implemented, right? They just gave us more blue gear, more purple gear, more blue ability materials, more purple ability materials. And selfishly, I want to take some credit in that because I've been screaming at them since I started it. And I think maybe they listened to me a little bit. Or also, I know that they also have a team that's working on right now. So we should probably give a big shout out to the new lead of growth from Marvel Strikers because he is doing a really good job with the new player experience. The new legendary system is amazing. The new horseman stuff is really good. The biggest downside right now, and, and here's the thing, this is all still in testing, the bad amount of experience you get on your account. So in Marvel Strike Force, you are barred from certain game modes if your account level isn't right. Now this is also true in Raid Shadow Legends, but you get your, you unlock everything in Raid Shadow Legends two months into the game, no matter what, if you're just farming and you're not losing any energy. In Marvel Strike Force, I'm three months into the game, I still haven't unlocked the midway campaign let alone the level 75 which will be another month the level 80 campaign that'll be another month so you're looking at six months before you have access to all the game modes maybe even more and then you have events that require you to take part in those game modes that are locked so right now there is a huge problem with account experience now they were doing a b testing some accounts got boosted they were unlocking those modes a month into the game. If that was the case, I would actually say the new player experience for Marvel Strike Force is a 10 out of 10. And what I mean by that is a casual person who doesn't watch Twitch or YouTube could come in. They could super get a lot of experience. They could start facing some problems and then they could look something up and learn. If, if they come in super engaged right off the bat, they will go so much further because they're going to have all their beginning resources put into the right spots. Um... The way it is right now, people get bored and leave before that is the case. They don't have enough teams to take part in uh, the game modes like War and Crucible because you just don't get enough resources to build them up to a usable level that is more usable than the, the basic AI they put in there. So that becomes a little problematic. So if they get rid of the bad account experience and they increase people's potential to build up teams to like a mid-game level... The new player experience from Marvel Strike Force, it might be the best mobile game in the mobile game industry if they did that for new players. But then they'd have to market it, and I don't think they want to spend marketing money. <laughs> Raid Shadows, on the other hand, has no problem spending marketing money. So I started Raid Shadow Legends Cold Turkey because I started a partnership with them. Again, if you're new to Raid Shadow Legends, download using the link in the comment section or the description or uh, the QR code that is now in the middle of the screen. You get a bunch of goodies, and this is what I mean. Raid Shadow Legends is not afraid to just give out legendary characters. So we talked about the agency of it all. It is hard or difficult to pull legendary characters. 
Well, in Raid Shadow Legends, every... I've been playing for two months. I think every second week, I've gotten an inbox message that says, Hey, go to your Amazon Prime store, show that you're a member of Prime, get this free epic character. Or, hey, log in for seven days between... I think it was like between January and March 5th. And you got a free legendary uh, Dungeons and Dragon inspired character, Wrath, who's who's carried me super far. I know they did Ronda Rousey for free. I know they did an orc that looks like Thrall for free. I know they did Sun Wu Kong for free. So when you're going to start Raid Shadow Legends, you gotta follow the promo codes. You want to start the game when a legendary character is in the promos. You want to use the promo codes that are already part of the game, whether it be mine, whether it be yeah, Ninja had a free character. Thank you, Daddy Warwicks, in the. Uh, in the Twitch chat. Um, Deacon, who is an amazing speed-based character, is available from a promo code. All you got to type in is, I believe, is Super Power, all capitals. You get you could check on a bunch of different websites, if I'm wrong there. Xena Warrior Princess was a promo character that people got. So there are definitely avenues in which they just give you characters like here take this character and now go beat the hell out of that dragon or take this character go beat the hell out of that faction war go beat up the doom tower and that's definitely an amazing new player experience right following the socials there's like a promo code every week whether it be for resources for a character the login calendars for these amazing characters i think raid shadow legends definitely has a lot more excitement in that because the meta in Marvel Strike Force moves fast. But characters in Raid Shadow Legends are eternal, it seems. So when you get a great character from a promo, you don't have to worry that it might take you a month, a month and a half to build that character up. Because you know that character is still going to be amazing three years from now. All right, guys. That's going to be it. I'm sorry this one took a little bit longer to do than I thought it would. 23 minutes in. Are you still here? That's crazy. Final verdict, Marvel Strike vs. Raid Shadow Legends. Well, we talked about the scream time, which is kind of a, a big deal, right? This is kind of a, a big commitment for both. And what would I say? Be healthy. Be casual in both of them. Play casually in Marvel Strike Force. Hit your Crucible super fast. Hit your War super fast. Don't overthink it. Have fun with it. Lean into the cookie cutters. Lean into your content creators like Dorky Dad or, or Mobile Gamer or Jutsi or whoever the case may be. Try their their uh, hybrid teams out on what they're using it on. And don't overthink it. Just play the game. Same with Raid Shadow Legends. Get in there, mix it up, play it. Fight a dragon. Push as far as you can to the dragon. Just play the game and have fun. That's what games are supposed to be. If you're spending... 10 or 6 hours staring at your phone, that's not the game for you. All right? If you need if you need to be able to sim it or to put it on autoplay and walk away. Autoplay and walk away. Both these games are super fun. I hope to play both with you. Obviously, you're on the Marvel Strike Force channel right now. Hit subscribe if you're not already. And if you want to join me in Raid Shadow Legends, go down, hit the subscribe button there, download the game, get a bunch of free stuff including the epic character Tyrell, and I can't wait to play both of these great games with you. Have yourselves a great day. Bye for now. Cop out 23 minutes for no decision. <laughs> Steve. Dorky dad, who the hell is that? True. The real question is, if Raid was not sponsor, you would you play it? Uh, I think Raid Shadow Legends is going to drop our sponsorship soon. And yeah, I'm still going to play it. Uh, I will make zero content for it, but I will still play it. Big news tomorrow? Is there? I don't think so. I have a meeting with them tomorrow, which is why I wanted to do one of the Crucibles tonight. Am I wrong? Uh, no, nothing tomorrow. Not that I see. All right. Uh, well, that's going to be my, my project. It's already 11 o'clock. I'm just going to go to bed. I'll work on that in the morning and, and get some footage from both games and go from there. Uh, yeah, is anybody streaming right now? I got a bunch of people streaming right now. That's great. Let's head on over to Zero Cool Gamer. You guys want to head on over to Zero Cool? But you can bet up on fellow content creators in CC, though. That's true. Uh, I, will, I would never leave Marvel Strike Force. I'll probably be with Marvel Strike Force until it dies, or if I ever eventually put the effort into this general gaming and news channel that i want to do and it blows up that'd be the only way hey uh i'm i just saw all the vods 
I'm going to publish them all right now. Hold on. Publish. Publish. Hold on. Are they all unpublished for some reason? I don't know why they do that. Actually, I do know why they do that because Kingdom Hearts hit us with it. And they're like, hey, are you sure you want to publish this? Because maybe they'll sue you. More Dark County, more Voss. There you go. All right, guys. Let's head on over to Zero Cool Gamer. Let him know I say what up. Tell him to make sure he stands up to shake your hand. And uh, have yourselves a great night. You guys are the best. I look forward to hanging out again tomorrow. But for now, stay safe and uh, sleep well. I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing to say. Bye. YouTube.